Hey guys, how's it going? Anthony Mutraja here, back with a video lesson. A video lesson. Wow, after quite some time, been super busy, swamped with um, gigs and traveling and uh, working on the album and all that stuff, etc., etc. Just a lot of stuff happening. Um, before I forget, I just released my solo debut record. Um, Last week, uh, on the 7th, um, it's on all digital platforms. Road Not Taken. Check it out. Let me know what you think. And um, I definitely appreciate the love and support I've gotten so far. So for those of you who haven't, check it out. All right, so for today's lesson, I started out with a little looper jam over a four chord vamp. Uh, one thing I get asked a lot in general is phrasing. How do I develop my phrasing? How do I approach it? What are th what's my thought process, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. So, I figured I would use this loop I've got going on here and talk about a few things that uh, intrigue me um, as far as practicing and then as far as playing actually goes. Okay. Now, I constantly like to maintain the difference between performance and practice, just like um, Jeff Berlin always stresses that practice is practice. And art is art. Okay. Needless to say, the two fundamental things you would need as far as understanding goes is chords. And scales that go with this, the chords. Okay. Now the chords I'm using are three sets of minor nine chords. So F minor, G minor nine, A flat minor nine. Then I go to an A flat or a B flat, like a B flat sus basically. But the sus we are going for is the A flat based, not the not an E flat uh, based chord because there are two kinds of susses you can go for. One is the uh, one chord over the five, like that, and then you can go for the four chord. Sorry, yeah, four chord over the five. So two different kinds of susses. So what scale you choose to use there also affects the actual harmony that's happening there. And um, so F minor nine, you can use a Dorian. For the sake of keeping things simple, I'm going to use modal names. Dorian. You can use the melodic minor. You can also use the harmonic minor. Although I must admit, it can be a little weird depending on the context. Okay, in this case, the F minor nine going to G minor nine, it sounds weird, in my opinion. Okay, so you have three sets of minor nine chords. You can use, in my opinion, the two scales, the Dorian and the melodic minor, the three of them. So it's F, 
G and then A flat. Now the big question is how do we connect them, right? So I have a very simple exercise for you. What we're going to do is just play quarter notes on every chord using the chord scale. Okay, we're going to use Dorian for now. And what we're going to try to focus on is getting to the next chord from whichever note you're last played on, whichever chord it is. Okay, so in other words, if I do this. Okay, I just played the three chords. Let me slow that down. F minor, 2, 3, 4, B flat, G minor, 3, 4, A flat minor, 2, 3, 4. So first four notes, F, G, A flat, B flat. Now the next note is the C, which is part of G minor or even F minor. So when I hit the C, I've already made the switch to the G minor, to the Dorian. Hence the E is there and the D to F, right? So C, D, E, F. And after the F, I'm going to A flat minor. So I'm going to G flat, A flat, B flat, B. So you get this melodic motion. What are we doing? We're taking the chord scale and we're going up the scale using quarter notes. And whichever note we will end on last, we make sure to get to the next note of the next relevant scale. To be very honest, that's all it takes to improvise with meaning and control. You need to know the harmony and then know the scale well enough that you don't have to jump your ideas like... Which is cool, you can do that, fine, but sometimes you just want to be able to connect very minimalistically okay so i'm just going to demonstrate a little bit so i'm going to use um, quarter note ideas now Okay, now the fourth chord in that sequence is that sus, the A flat over B flat, which is the E flat major scale. So I'm thinking E flat major scale. So the four scales we are thinking of is F Dorian, G Dorian, A flat Dorian to E flat major. Okay, or you can think of B flat mixolydian, however you want to think, no problem, as, lo as long as it gives you the result that you're looking for and it sounds right and you're, you're in full control. So that's eighth, that's quarter notes. Now I'm going to use the quarter notes and further push out more ideas. Still thinking of the Dorian, so I'm not playing anything extremely out. All right. A flat minor. All right, I scuffed up there a little bit with this. Um, okay, I went a little out there. Okay. 
Okay, I can't remember exactly what I did, but I'm going to review this before I post it anyway. So I'm going to find out what I did wrong. Okay, so I'm trying to stay in control every single time, every single phrase I'm trying to put out. So if it's something as simple as... Right? Okay, I use a chromatic note there, for instance. So, I didn't think of the chromatic note at that moment, but eventually, what starts to happen if you do this, let's say, an hour or two a day with just four chords, or once you feel comfortable enough over standards. Um, first four bars or whatever it is, you start to develop what people refer to as chops to be able to solo. And you keep doing this to a point where it becomes almost autopilot in the sense of thought process. You don't have to think of these specific things anymore. You can just play freely. And that is the art form. But this is how you practice it, where you are specifically thinking, okay, I'm going to do these scales and move it in this specific manner. Okay. So again, just to be clear, know your scales, know your chords. Knowing these two elements will help you push things further out. All right, and with that, I'd like to wrap up this lesson, and I'll probably just wrap it up with a little jam, actually. So I'll see you guys in the shed until the next one. Peace. <laughs>